Ooh, this is very exciting. Let's see what this sounds like under a bit of load. Hey guys, it's Joel. Good morning and welcome back to the channel and to my Maserati Quattroporte. And today is a video that I've been very, very excited to make. And it's a secret I've been keeping from you. This thing has been organized for, or well, pretty much since the car arrived. This was always going to happen with the Maserati Quattroporte. I was always going to get an exhaust for it. See, the thing is, and I will freely admit, this car sounds absolutely spectacular. But the problem with that is that the spectacular sound comes from the back. And in this five meter long saloon, it's quite an awful long way back from where I'm sitting. And so inside, you don't really get much of that exhaust note. Needless to say, of course, as well, this thing is double glazed, extremely well insulated. I mean, ultimately, the Quattroporte, or the Quattroporte as many of you are telling me it is, was designed to be the luxurious, road-going, calming, businessman's utensil. But the truth is we've got a 4.2 litre V8 Ferrari-derived engine up the front and these things can sound absolutely beautiful with the right pipes going out the back. So this morning we're on the way to my good friends at Quicksilver Exhaust to install one of their bespoke systems for the Maserati Quattroporte. Now of course, these were designed back in the day when the Quattroporte was new. And actually, it's kind of hard to find any footage or real video or sound clips of what this really sounds like. But with the Quicksilver systems, they're always designed to bring out the best in a car. So it's not just going to be really loud and drony all the time. I would imagine it will be louder at all times, but not to a point that's unbearable. But what it should do is sort of naturally when this engine opens up around three to 4,000 RPM, at that point, it should really let the car breathe more, let the car sing more, and let through a lot more sound. We'll speak to Ollie a little bit more in depth about what this might actually do to the car and exactly what the system is designed to accomplish. And of course, by the end of this video, we're all gonna hear what it sounds like. So listen, I am very, very excited. I've done many exhaust modifications to many cars, and uh, this one wasn't one that I just wanted to gut. It wasn't one that I wanted to straight pipe. Yes, I did it with the 7 Series, but it does go against everything that this car stands for. The good news is that we have some really nice roads between here and Whitley, where the chaps at Quicksilver are based. So I've got a GoPro on the back. Let's get some final exhaust sounds, now the car's warmed up, of, of what this thing sounds like stock, and then we can compare it straight after. So I'm just going to flip the car across into manual. We'll go into sport for good measure. That doesn't really do anything other than sharpen the throttle response. I think it weights up the steering a little bit, and it also makes the suspension quite firm. And yes, we're gonna use the paddles now, go down into first gear. Let's just do a slow build. So that's a slow build up to six and a half thousand RPM. Second gear, slow build up to five and a half. And a bit like uh, Ferraris that I've driven, just the 430 Scud and the 360, but especially that 430, they're sort of designed that the valves only fully open when you're fully on the throttle, which I find quite frustrating that because it's such a fast car, but the same sort of thing applies to this, which surprised me a little bit. So you can hear if I sort of just ease it in second, it doesn't really do anything, but when you put your foot down, it really opens up. That's enough talking. Let's go see Ollie. Let's get to Quicksilver. Let's get an exhaust for my Maserati. Well, welcome back, Joel. What's it been, a few years? Must be, I think M240i was the last one. So what was that, two, three years ago? Yeah, two, three years. Easily. So you've had our modern systems with all the valve control and all the tech. Now we're going old school. So come <laughs> this way. You're on obviously on the ramp, Super Ben and George of uh, hit that at lightning speed and already got the exhaust off it. So, here's what's come off. The original exhausts on one of these are quite heavily mechanically baffled. So as we've spoken about before, and at the risk of repeating myself, if you've already done a piece to camera with your viewers, what we're looking for is to introduce a bit more tone to your car, keep the sound old school, 
keep everything period correct for the car. And I think that's kind of important to note is actually now with this age of the car, you've started to get things like Ferrari 550s and 575s going through Classic A certified programs. So I think people, even if it's aftermarket, people are looking for something that's period correct. Now, Quicksilver's been going since 1973. So our exhaust here, the one that's about to go on your car, um, is essentially unchanged in design since this system came out, which I think, I think was in 05. I have to go back and check the archives. So very much of its era, exactly the same construction, same jigs, nothing's changed, same bloke that makes them. Everything's still made in the UK. Let me peel back this netting. So old one here, new one here, uh, as you can see, substantially shinier on this one. Not dissimilar in terms of packaging. Um, there's only so much space you can work with. So you tend to find that they're fairly similar dimensionally. It's what's inside that counts. So. This one, chambered, where the exhaust gases fight their way through a series of sort of separate, almost imagine little hallways in a house to eventually exit through here. This one, common chamber down one side and perforation down here. So if you imagine like a Porsche 911 silencer flipped the other way, that's what's going on in here. So the aim is that we don't want this thing to be making your ears bleed. You want to hear it outside. It wants to be present and punchy. But what we're trying to do is where noise is stifled on this one, what we want is some noise to come into the cabin so that you can enjoy that V8 tone. Right, let's see what this sounds like. <laughs> well, what do we think then? I think that sounds pretty good to me, although the Maserati Quattroporte, despite it being quite an old car, only lets you rev it up to four and a half, four, four and a bit thousand RPM. So it red lines all the way at around seven, I've forgotten now, but it's seven something. And so it's that top end. I'm gonna be interested to hear what that sounds like when we go out for a drive. One thing I really like about this system is it still retains that OEM look of the tailpipes. That's really important, but the way the boxes are angled, you can sort of see them dip below that rear bumper. So from behind, it just gives it certainly a very shiny, <laughs> matching the chrome wheels effect, but a really aggressive look because of the angle of those boxes. It does look fantastic. There she is, still looking amazing, of course, after the incredible job iValet guys did on this in the last video with the G-Technic treatment. It's uh, very, very satisfying to look at. And now we've got the chrome finish at the back of the car to match the chrome wheels. It does look awesome. Let's see what this sounds like under a bit of load. Right. Stepping in the Quattroporte then, I've not driven it yet with this exhaust on, so I'm... <laughs> excited to see what this sounds like because as i mentioned you can only rev up to i think it's four and a half it stops and the red line is at seven and a half and to be honest that's where i'm most interested is at the high end whether this quicksilver system just gives me a bit more pitch but also a bit more noise because i am craving just a little bit more noise from this so Let's go with the Quicksilver exhaust. I can't believe it. Good thing about this Quattro Porte as well, of course, because it's such a practical car, uh, I've been able to chuck the old system in the back. Right, so of course, I'll flick it straight into manual. And, uh, oh yeah. Oh yes, 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 yes. We're just trickling along, obviously, but you can. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay, I have to say, when I was stood outside and we were just giving it some revs then, it is, it's kind of difficult, because at the end of the day, when you stand right behind a car that's revving, it's always to, to a point gonna sound pretty loud. Um, however, it's very noticeably louder once we step inside. Right, I can tell you this is a big difference, actually. 
Oh, you can really feel it. <laughs> oh, and there's some overruns as well. Let's go for a downshift into second. So we were doing this earlier. This is 3,000 RPM downshift. It's much more, well, it's definitely louder, but the sound, you can, I can feel. <laughs> I can feel the car through the pedal, if that makes any sense. It's, it's much more alive now. It feels less restricted. In fact, it feels like I'm in sport mode when I'm not in sport mode, if that makes sense. It's just, it's sharper, it's a bit more responsive. Let's accelerate hard here. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is worth it. Wow. Wow, that sounds fantastic. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. It's not like deafening. It's not gonna upset the neighbors, hopefully. Don't know what a true cold start will be like in this thing, will be quite noisy. But what it will do is when you just want to get on it a little bit and... Oh yeah. That three grand, you hear that? That 3,000 RPM buzz is really addictive. Oh my goodness. Ooh, this is very exciting. <laughs> you know, this is what... Oh. This is what the Quattro Porte should have sounded like out the factory. Okay, maybe not, because the sort of folk that would be buying one of these may have been slightly older, let's say. But it just, I mean, it just, it, in the simplest terms, allows the engine to breathe. It allows the gases, as Ollie very well described, to flow in such a way that is way less restrictive and, and more true and more natural to the engine, if that makes any sense. But in the simplest of terms, it does this. <laughs> One thing's for sure, with this Quicksilver exhaust system, I'm gonna be spending a lot more money on fuel. So please let me know down in the comments below what you think. <laughs> I hope in some way all of you guys can see this in person. Maybe I should go to a car meet or something where a load of you can come along and hear this because it, I don't know what it will sound like on video, but it really is a wonderful soundtrack in person, in real life. So do comment below what you think. And of course, make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't done so already. I'll leave a link down below to Quicksilver as well, because as you guys I'm sure can tell, Ollie and the rest of the guys there are absolutely fantastic, and they do a whole load of systems for a whole load of cars. Older stuff like this, and way more sophisticated valve stuff for all sorts of new cars as well. So I'll leave a link down to Quicksilver below, and I definitely encourage you to check those guys out. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one, hopefully very, very soon. of the video people well I actually forgot when I was filming the video that Quicksilver are right by the Hindhead tunnel and I thought on my way home I'd quickly do my first tunnel run in the Quicksilver Quattroporte so uh, you've made it this far in the video you get to have this honour with me
So back into manual, of course I've only got these windows opening at the moment, so let's just crack those a little. And uh, sport mode, get down to...